All right. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. I started the recording. Um, all right. So just a few quick announcements. Um, sorry for any background noise today. It's actually there's, there's going to be background noise quite a bit um, over the next couple weeks. Um, I'm having a little bit of work done on the house that needs to be done. And also there's going to be major construction going on outside my house. They're replacing a um, the main gas pipeline. So they're digging up the street and they're going to be in, and they're going to be paving the, the road and stuff. So I, I apologize for any background noise that you guys get over the next couple of weeks. I'm really sorry about that. Um, all right. Uh, exam number three is Thursday. And then also homework number five is due Thursday. OK, um, the exam number three is going to be exactly like um, the last exams will we'll come to class. You'll load up the um, uh, the exam and, and I'll stay on I'll stay on zoom for anybody who has questions. Um, you know, if you have extended time, you, the, the extended time is built in there for you. And, um, you know, it'll just be like the last two exams. So if you paid attention and make heavy use of your calculator, which we're going to do a bunch today, I really think you'll be able to rock this exam, like knock it out of the park. Okay. Um, the best way to study for the exam is that homework number five. Um, Really, the questions on the exam just model that. Like it's it, it's super super easy. The 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 exam compared to the homework. Like if you rock the homework, you'll rock the exam. I promise you. And then I know this pains everybody to hear, um, and I know you're really sad about this. But my class and my office hours. Uh, but for you guys mostly, class is canceled next Tuesday. There won't be any class. Okay. I know. Very sad, right? I think I can I can feel your sarcasm in that in that post, Melissa. It's okay. It's all right. It's cool. It's cool. All right. Um, so before I'm I'm gonna do an exam review, okay? Um, but before I do that, um, does anybody have any questions on the homework that they would like to see me do? I'll miss you guys too. I will. But thank you for, for, for saying that you will. All right. So all seriousness, uh, homework number five, a little bit of a typo on the due date. My apologies on that, but um, are there any problems people want to see me do? You know, this is, this is your chance to say, oof, Matt, I don't know. This problem would give me a little bit of trouble. How many people have tried the homework? Let me start with that. How many people have started the homework? Okay. Was it pretty straightforward, Melissa? Four B. So four B, so what it means when I say no more than 13%, it's 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 less than thirteen percent. That's the the little bit of wording there. So no more than thirteen percent. It's really less than thirteen percent. So not less than or equal. Correct. So so for problem four B. So the question was, yep, no more than, and, I, and uh, Bertha, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, absolutely. No more than 13%. So what this is really asking is what's the probability your P hat is this, All right? Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, uh, so you know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm actually gonna, how about I just do problem number one for everybody on the homework? Um, the, the good news is on the homework is, um, good news on the homework compared to the exam is problem number one on the homework deals with the uniform distribution. Um, there's actually no uniform distribution on the uh, exam. Okay, I decided to take it off because it had been like a really long time since we talked about it. So let me just help you with this homework question. 
Um, and then, you know, you'll be, you'll be good to go. And hopefully people can help me out in the chat a little bit with the homework question. All right, suppose that travel time from White Train uh, Transit Center to WCC on public transit, and this is bus route number 40, follows a uniform distribution with a minimum time of 12 minutes. So that's the least amount of time it could take you to get there from Transit Center to WCC, and then the maximum time is 22 minutes. Like if you hit all the lights and there's traffic or something. Okay, so when you get on the bus, you don't know how long it's gonna take you, okay? So it could be 12 minutes, it could be 22, it could be everything in between. So we're gonna define this random variable X represent the time from White Plains Transit Center to WCC on public transit. So time on transit from White Plains to WCC. Okay, and what, what it's telling you in the problem is X follows a uniform distribution. Okay, well, if someone could just help me out in the chat, what was the minimum value that X could take on? Like what's the least amount of travel time? Yep, okay, thanks. And what's the maximum amount of travel time? All right, awesome, thanks Jamie and Melissa, yep. So the first question says, uh, what is the probability density function? We call this the PDF for the random variable X. Okay. And so you just got to look back in your notes for the, for the stuff we talked about with the um, uniform distribution. Okay. So the PDF for a uniform distribution was a piecewise defined function. It's one over B minus A. This is for X between A and B and it's zero otherwise. So if you guys remember what, what I said A was, A was the least possible value or the starting value. So that's the value 12 here. And B is the ending value. Like you can see, right? X is between A and B. <gasps> Look, here, here's X is between these two numbers. So this is one over B minus A here. So this is 22 minus 12. Um, what does 22 minus 12 get you? Yeah, yeah, so it's just one over 10 for X between 12 and 22 and it's zero otherwise, okay? So I think if you guys remember, we did an example like this. I think the first one I did was like waiting for a package to get delivered, if that rings a bell. That's where this is going. This is where this is going all the way back towards. All right, now part B says, um, sketch the density curve, the density curve for the random variable X. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to draw the first quadrant of the Cartesian plane. You have X. I think I called this P of X before. Sorry. All right, so what goes along the horizontal axis? You, you can start at zero, and then you're going to put the value 12. None of this is drawn to scale and 22. And then along the vertical axis here, you're going to put this value 1 tenth. Okay. And what you do is you draw a horizontal line between 12 and 22. And then you draw 
two horizontal lines at the x-axis down here like this. Okay, so it's just this straight line here. That, that was the density curve. All right, now I know it's been a while. Um, do people kind of remember this? Does it, does it jog a little bit of, of people's memory? All right, awesome, awesome. This is not on the test. I took it off the test. I can put it on the test, but I, but I, I, I think it'd be best just to take it off. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So the next question is this. Part C says, what is the probability the travel time is between 15 and 18 minutes? Okay. So I wanna find the probability that you travel, it takes you between 15 and 18 minutes. So what you would have done is you go in here and you put in the values 15 and 18 and you shade the area under the curve for what you're looking for, okay? So then you just gotta find this area. So the area here is equal to length times width because it's a rectangle that I drew. So the length is the distance from 15 to 18, okay? What's the distance from 15 to 18? Well, what's 18 minus 15? Mm -hmm. And then the width is this 1 tenth. So three times 1 tenth just gets you 3 tenths. So the probability that if you hop on this bus number 40 and it takes you between 15 and 18 minutes is 3 tenths or 0 0.30. All right, so good news, I, I did homework question one for you, okay? So everybody should get that one right. <laughs> All right, how about this? How about I do the exam review for you now? And then at the end, if you guys want me to go back and do any homework questions, we can do that, okay? But the exam review should really like set you up for uh, success on both finishing the homework and, uh, and doing the exam. All right, any, any questions about that before I do the exam review then? Not much chitter in the chatter as they say. Okay. All right, so here are the uh, topics on the um, exam, okay? I'm actually taking off the uniform distribution, okay? So it's about continuous random variables. So it's about, um, it's about X, X bar, and P hat, okay? And really what I'm gonna be doing is basically asking you a lot of probability questions, a lot of probability questions on here. So for all of these things, okay, when I ask you questions about the normal distribution, the sampling distribution of the sample mean and the sampling distribution of the sample proportion, really what this is all about is it's gonna be the normal CDF in your calculator. Okay, so any, so just please trust me on this. Whenever you get a probability question on the exam, just grab that trusty calculator, that T83 or T84 and use the normal CDF. Always, 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 okay. I've also built in a tolerance on the exam. So if you're off by like, if you round in correctly or something, or if you end up using the standard normal table, it will accept it, okay. So don't stress so much about, you know, that just, be meticulous with, with what you put in and uh, you'll, you'll do great. So the exam has on it, the exam is 17 questions, okay? 
in the in the questions order go literally this the first couple questions will be about the normal distribution the next couple questions will be about the sampling distribution of the sample mean and then the final couple questions will be about the sampling distribution of the sample proportion additionally each each question at the top will have a um a title to it so it'll say like this is a normal distribution question or this is a sampling distribution for the sample mean or sampling distribution for the sample proportion so it really like you know if you're if you're stuck you know just remember they go in order and then look at the title of the question okay so what i want to do today for you is i'm going to do um one example of this this and this for you and then when you come to the exam on thursday the problems are going to be roughly the same all right the only thing that's going to change is the numbers okay so just use the processes that i talk about uh, in class here Bum, 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 bum. All right. You guys ready for me to go to the next slide? I got one ready. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks. Thanks, guys. All right. Woo. Ready. All right, so this first type of question is just about the normal distribution. All right, so here's the problem. According to the US um, Energy Information Administration, The mean monthly electric household bill, so the mean monthly electric household bill is, looks like on average, according to them, it's $110.14, okay? Just out of curiosity, does that seem about right? A little low? I just pulled the problem from a textbook, so I'm, I'm curious what people think. How many people have no idea what their electric bill is every month? I'll be honest with you, I don't. Yeah, my, 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 my wife takes care of all the bills. She's, she's fabulous about that. So I, I honestly couldn't tell you, okay? So let's assume that monthly bills are normally distributed with a standard deviation let's just say of $20, okay? So I'm just making these, basically these numbers, especially the, the standard deviation is just made up just to, uh, to, so we can work the problem. Okay, so let's say, suppose a monthly electric bill is selected at random. All right, so I got three questions for you for this, okay? Here's the first one, one. What is the probability that electric bill is greater than $130. Okay. So here's the thing. This is how you're always going to tackle these problems, all right? 
Do I tell you that monthly electric bills are normally distributed? Yes or no? Our monthly electric bills, yep, thanks Melissa. Yep, totally, I just give it to you. I just say, look, they're, they're normally distributed. Do I give you the mean and standard deviation for electric bills? Do I give you those two things as well? Do I tell you what the average and standard deviation is for the electric bills? Okay, thanks Melissa, yep, I do. And then I ask you a probability, it's just gonna be a normal curve problem. All right, so here's how you're gonna set this up. You're selecting a bill at random. So I don't know how much that bill is gonna be. So I'm gonna let the random variable X be the um, monthly electric bill. for a randomly selected household. And I wanna find the probability that that bill X is greater than 130. Okay. All right, so I know it seems silly for me to say this, but um, what do I what do I say generally helps with these type of problems? Doing the what? Yeah, yeah. So look, I don't know if people feel the same way, but the reason I like to draw it is it just it helps me understand the problem, and I think it helps me understand what numbers I'm going to be inputting into my calculator. So look, X monthly electric bill is normally distributed. So it's gonna follow this bell curve. The bell curve is centered at the mean and this is the mean, 10, 14. One, 10, 14, sorry. And I wanna be greater than 130. So 130 is over here. So am I gonna to shade to the left or to the right if I wanna be greater than? Thanks. Okay. All right, so at this point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your calculator. It's normal CDF to do this. So you have to input four things in your calculator. The first thing is a lower value, all right? What is the lower value for this problem? 130. Yep, you're gonna start at 130, comma, and then you're gonna go upper. What's my upper value for a right here? Thank you, Jim. 9999. Yep. And then what goes next is the mean, which is this value right here. We said on average, people spend 110, 14, comma, and then whatever the standard deviation is. And that's 20. All right. I'm going to do everything in the TI-83 today, just a little bit easier for me. Um, if anybody ever wants me to do a, do a problem in the TI-84, just let me know and I'll go back and forth. Um, okay. So you're going to go second function, DISTR distribution, and it's option number two. And as I do these problems, I highly suggest that you follow along with me. Okay, and check your calculator, make sure you get the right thing. So it's 130, comma, 9999999, comma, 110.14, comma, 20. All right, how many people got this? Melissa did, Jamie, yep, okay, great. So this is the answer. So it's 0 0.160, and then I'm gonna round this three to a four. Okay. 
So general on the test, it's going to ask you, I'm pretty sure it's going to ask you to round everything to four decimal places. Okay. All right, just out of curiosity, can you guys hear that background noise? Sounds like a vacuum. You don't hear? Oh, that's good. Nobody else? Did anyone else hear it? I have a microphone that's supposed to block out very little. Okay, good, 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 good. I'm glad my microphone blocks it out. Okay. Thank you, $30 microphone on Amazon. Okay. Woohoo. Yeah. All right. So what do you think? Uh, this, I'm going to do two more quick examples of this, but like, does very straightforward think you can handle a question like this on the exam? I got one. Yep. Okay. I got two. I got two yeses, two yeppers. All right. So same type of information. I'm going to do a um, couple more. Good. I'm going to do a couple more questions, okay? So again, the same thing, right? What's the probability the monthly bill is between, let's say, a hundred and a hundred and thirty. Okay. So I want to find the probability that for whatever reason that monthly bill is between those two values here. Okay, so it's the probability that this X, this bill, is between a hundred dollars and a hundred thirty dollars. All right, unfortunately, I'm going to I'm going to do this a bunch today. <laughs> I'm going to sketch the curve. Okay, I'm going to sketch the curve. It should be normally distributed. You should be centered at 11014. And I want to be between 100, which is over here, and 130, which is way over here. And I want to find the area between. So I'm just going to shade in the area between. Okay. What helps us do this? As once I've shaded in the area, what am I going to just jump right to and use? Uh, Jamie, you're close. It's not just your calculator. Thank you. It's your trusty calculator. Isn't that not a funny joke? I thought the joke was I always say trusty calculator. I chuckled. <laughs> okay. All right. I try. I try to make it. I try to throw in the jokes every once in a while for you guys. But yes, Jamie's absolutely right. You're going to use the calculator. You're going to go to normal CDF. So you're going to do the lower. In this case, it's between, okay? So what's the first value I'm interested in here? What's my lower? 100. Yep. Comma, and then my upper is the final value I'm interested in. And then the mean is still the same, which is 1014, comma, and then the standard deviation which is 20. So second function distribution, go down to normal CDF. It's 100, comma 130, comma 110, 14, comma 20. How many people got this right here? Okay, Melissa's got it. Jamie, yep. <coughs> okay, 
So it's 0 0.5336 when I round it, 0 0.5336. All right. Um, do you guys want me to ask? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a problem up here and it's going to be as hard as it can be. Okay. I'm not like there's, this is as hard as it gets for these type of problems. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be quiet for like two minutes and um, uh, I'm going to let you guys see if you can solve it. And then I'm going to solve, show you how to do it. Does that sound okay? put up a really tricky problem and see if you can figure it out. And then we'll, we'll go for, and then I'll show you how to do it. Yeah, it seems easy. Okay. You guys okay if I go to the next slide? All right. So here's the question. What's the probability the monthly bill is less than, let's say $102 or greater than $122? Okay, what's the probability the monthly bill is less than 122, 102, I'm sorry, or greater than 122? All right, I'm going to be quiet for, for two, three minutes. See if you can at least set it up, okay? At least set it up, and then I will, um, I'll show you how to tackle it, okay? Can you go, yep. Is this what you wanted? Let me know when I can go back. Sorry for going so quick. Okay. All right. So let's try to set this up and we'll uh, we'll figure it out. All right, I'll give you another another 30 seconds and then I'm going to work it. Oh, uh, there's there's two ways to solve it, Melissa. Um uh, you can use the complement rule or you don't have to use the complement rule. There, there's, there's two ways to, to solve it. I'm going to do it without the complement rule, actually. Um, 
and then and then see if you get the same answer as me. Okay. All right. You guys ready? Uh, who's who, who's ready to see me work this one? Okay. All right, so look, it says, what's the probability the monthly bill is less than 102 or X is greater than 122, okay? So this is really cool. I think this is really cool, who knows? Um, when you see the or statement, okay? In, in mathematics and probability, what does the OR statement tell you to do? Remember, when you, see an, when you see an OR statement inside probability, like what mathematical operator does it tell you to do? Subtract. Um, no, well, sometimes subtract, but you always do. Starts with an A. Yeah, it's an addition. So you always add, always add. Another way that to figure that out is like, once you have this set up, sketch the curve, okay? So it's normally distributed. So we want to be at the mean is 110, 14. I want to find the probability of less than 102. So less than 102, I'm going to shade to the left. Or more than 122, which is shade to the right. So do you notice how there's two, two probabilities here, two tails? So I'm gonna do this as, I'm gonna find the probability of this one first, and then I'm gonna or, and then I'm gonna add it to the probability that X is greater than 122. Uh, Jamie, I got your direct message. I don't, I actually don't know the answer. Let's I'm I'll, I'll, I'll I, that could be the right answer. I'm not sure. Let's find out. Would it, would it surprise you guys to know that I don't, I, I do do the problems on the fly as we go through them. Did you guys think like I'm very well prepared and do every problem ahead of time? Or can you guys tell that I, I work the problems with you guys as we go through them? I think you're prepared, but I also think you just give us the problem because you're just such a great statistics teacher. So Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. You know what? That was really good. Really, really good, you know, butt kissing right there. So I'm going to make the exam easy for all of you. Okay. Ah, oh, that's not true. I already wrote the exam, but, um, Good liar. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I, so actually, you know, like I've been teaching statistics for 12 years. So I like, I, 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 I have my, my prep work. Um, I, I don't, I don't know the answers ahead of time. I work them with you guys, but like, I, you know, I've been doing it so long. I, I have an idea of what it should be. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked here. So to answer these problems, okay. You're always going to do normal CDF. Okay. So for the first one, less than 102. It's a left tailed probability. So it's going to be minus 9999999 comma up to 102 comma the mean which is 11014 and then the standard deviation of 20 plus another normal CDF. So this one starts at 122 and it's going to go to 9999999 comma 110.14 comma 20. Professor, I have a quick question. Yeah. I'm sorry, I might have missed this, but where are we getting the 9999 from? Everything really? else I understand. No, no, not a, not a bad question at all. So what happens is, is these, whenever you have this, this probability, do you know how I'm shading off to the left? You see where my pen is right here? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you do that, like the first thing you're gonna have to put in is a lower value. And so do you notice how like it, there is no number over here? I just, I just shaded. 
Whenever it's to the left, it's always going to be 9999, negative 9999. And then whenever I have a probability to the right, when I have this tail to the right, the upper value is going to be 9999. Always. That's just, just what we're what we're gonna do. That's so, so that's where those numbers come from. All right, so let's figure out this one first, the normal CDF. So this first one here is second function distribution, normal CDF, negative 99999, comma 102, comma 11014, comma 20. So this first probability here is 0 0.3420. 0 0.3420. Plus, now we have to figure out this one. So normal CDF, 122, comma, 99999, comma, 11014, comma, 20. So you got 0 0.2766, 0 0.2766. Hold on one second, guys. Just a phone call. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Okay, my apologies, everybody. So when you add them, you get 0.3420 plus 0.2766. You get 0.6186. Did anybody who did this on their own get close to that? I think somebody messaged me privately and got pretty close to that. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think? Good, good, good. Did, so for this tricky problem, did, I, I find that the drawing really helped me. Like it, it really helped me figure this out. Um, there's another way you can do this. You can do it using the complement rule. Um, like you could have done this also as one minus a normal CDF uh, 102 to 122. Yep, that's, that's another way you could have done it. Yeah, and you should get roughly the same thing if you wanted to do it that way. But I find that this way, it's a little bit easier to just comprehend what you're doing. All right, what did you, uh, I don't know, you guys feel like you're good on, good on this type of problem for the exam? I got one yes. It's honestly just reading the words, make sure you just do the right math work. Yeah, yeah. for as long as I've been teaching statistics, like none of this math is hard, right? And like we use the calculator as much we can. It's all just like word problem stuff. Like what's given, where do I input it? That that type of stuff. That's that's only that's the only thing that makes this hard. One more one more question really quick. Sure. Um, when you're putting normal CDF into the calculator, does the order matter? Yes, like the okay. lower upper, yes. It has, okay, got to be, it. has to be the correct order. Yep. All right. You got it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Do you have a TI-83? I have the TI-84. 
So if you use the TI-84, like it, 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 um, I'll do a TI, I'll use the TI-84 next, but like, do you see this screen on your, where it says lower, upper, mean? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you just have to follow that, but. Uh, okay, well, got it, thank you. Yep, yep, no problem. Okay. All right, let's do, so we're gonna skip the break. Uh, let's move into the um, sampling distribution of the, uh, of the sample mean now, okay? So the next type of question. All right, so here's the um, here's the problem. I'll, I'll help set it up. According to a report by Nielsen and Co. So they're a real company. They, they're the company that generally tracks like television ratings, things like that. All right. So according to a report by Nielsen and Co, the mean number of TVs in a household is um, 2.24. Um, I'm just going to stop there for a second. Uh, just out of curiosity, um, what do we think of that number? Is, are people surprised, think it's low, think it's high. So on, what they're saying is on average, there are 2.24 televisions per household in the United States. I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll say so. You know, like, it's, so remember, it's just an average of everybody. So like there's households that have like six TVs in it. There's households that have none, you know, uh, in my family, you know, there's only, there's only one household per TV, but like, you know, we all have iPads and computers, you know, it's, it's really funny. Just the interest, interesting, like over time, like we have one TV in our house, but we, we have like two iPads and like, I think we have like six computers in our house right now. So it's just interesting. All right, so according to a report by Nielsen & Co, the mean number of TVs per household is 2.4, 2.24 with a standard deviation of uh, three. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just making up the, the standard deviation here, okay. Suppose a random sample of 100 households is taken. And the mean number of TVs is recorded. Okay. All right, do you notice in the problem here, do I, do you guys see in the problem anywhere where it says normal distribution, just out of curiosity, do you see that anywhere? No. no. Yeah, so to be honest with you, I, the number of TVs per household does, definitely does not follow a normal distribution, okay? It's, it's definitely way right skewed, okay? But that's not a problem, okay? Because what we're doing here is we're taking a random sample of 100 households and then the mean is recorded. All right, so here's, here's gonna be the setup to this problem. Let's describe the sampling distribution
for X bar, okay? And just so we're clear, what exactly is X bar? Okay. Um, X bar is the sample mean number of TVs. So it's the mean number of TVs. That's the number sign. I'll actually write it. Mean number of TVs in a random sample of 100 households. Does anybody remember what I said, like the most important theorem of the class is? Uh-oh, it started with a C and ended in entral limit theorem. Nobody's got that joke or could repeat it. No, no laughs, okay. So. Let's see if you guys remember this. Um, the most important theorem of the class is something called the central limit theorem, okay? And the central limit theorem said, look, as long as you take a sample size greater than or equal to a specific number, the distribution of X bar, okay, the sampling distribution will be normally distributed. Does anybody remember what the, what the number was, what the cutoff number was? Yep, awesome, right there in the chat. So long as n is the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, okay? Um, then the distribution of X bar will be normal. So I'm gonna write this. Since our sample size, which in this case was 100, because we talked to 100 households. Since our sample size is greater than or equal to 30, the sampling distribution of X bar will be normal, will be normally distributed. With, okay, so whenever I tell you something is normally distributed, I give you a mean and a standard deviation. Okay, so with mean, we denote as mu sub x bar, so the average of the averages. And what our formula told us is that that's equal to whatever the population mean is. So do I give you the population mean anywhere in the problem? Yes. Yeah, how, so like, like you know, let's just assume that Nielsen is correct. So on, on average, how many TVs are there per household? 2.24. And the standard deviation, we also call the standard error, is denoted as mu sub x bar, or I'm sorry, sigma x bar. Sorry, I misspoke there, sigma x bar. Does anybody remember the formula for it? Yes. What is it? Don't you divide? Um, I always forget what that the name of that circle. Yes, it's sigma. It's sigma a standard deviation. So sigma divided by the square root of n. Yep, perfect. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this population standard deviation, which is right here. It, it says standard deviation of three. You're going to take three, and you're going to divide it by the square root of our sample size, which is the square root of a hundred. Well, the square root of 100 is 10. 3 divided by 10 is 0 0.3. Okay. All right. So look now, like a hint for the exam. Okay. A hint for the exam. Whenever you start seeing things like the mean is recorded or describe the sampling distribution of X bar, or when I ask you a probability about a sample mean, it's really like just gonna be the normal CDF, but you just gotta remember this step right here. Like just 
just computationally, you just got to remember this step. Take the standard deviation, divide it by the square root of the sample size. Always, always, always. All right. Um, let me know when I can go to the, uh, the next slide. Everybody good? Anybody need me to say? Uh, yes, I got a private message. The, the answer to your question is yes. Just remind me. All right, I'm going to, hopefully everybody's got this and don't stress too much because I am going to save the slides and post them to the classroom along with the recordings. Let me go to the next question, okay? So you're going to take this sample of 100 households and you're going to you know, record the sample mean number of televisions in, the, in that random sample. So the first part here is first question. What's the probability the sample mean of the, that X bar, of the, the average of those 100 houses, the sample mean is less than two TVs per household. All right, so it's just the probability that X bar is less than two. Okay. I know it seems silly, um, but what do you think I'm going to do here to help me solve this? Draw the curve. <laughs> yes, I'm going to draw the curve. So what I'm drawing here is the distribution of X bar. And look, what we saw in the previous slide was it was normally, normally distributed. The average was 2.24. And I want to be less than two. So two is over here. So I want to be less than two. Okay, so what do I, uh, uh, what am I going to do? Normal CDF. Normal CDF. Yeah, it's always a normal CDF. Whenever I ask you a probability question on the exam, trust always it's always normal CDF. So what always goes in is the lower. So since this is a left-tailed problem here, so as I have this tail to the left shaded, what's my lower? Negative nine nine nine. Next is upper. So I'm going to go up to two. So this is telling me where it stops. Go to two. Then the mean is next. What is the uh, mean here? So go on ahead. Yeah. 2.24. 2.24. Perfect. So now this is the only part that's different. Okay. What number am I going to put for the standard deviation? Um, the answer that you got on the previous question. Boom. Yep. And it's also in the chat. Okay. So I'll do the TI-84 for this one here. Okay. So it's second function distribution normal CDF, the lower is minus 99999, the upper is two. This mu is the mean, which is 2.24. Sigma is the standard deviation, which we saw was 0 0.3. And then you're just gonna paste and you should get this. So how many people were following along got this with me here? 
Awesome. So it's 0 0.2119 when I run it, 0 0.2119. OK. Not too bad. Quick question. I ran to the bathroom real quick. How do we get 0 0.3? Yep, no problem. It's right here. From the previous. All right. Makes sense. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. All right, let me ask let me ask just another follow-up question to this, okay? And then I'll give you, I'm gonna be quiet and give you a chance to just work it in your calculator for two seconds, okay? What's the probability the sample mean is greater than 2.5 TVs per household. Okay. I'm gonna be quiet for, for 60 seconds. Okay, see if, see if you can solve this without my help. Like even if, even if you don't have your graphing calculator on, you just try to set it up. Two point five, Jamie, two point five. Yeah. All right, I'll give you another I'll give you another twenty seconds or so and then I'll I'm gonna hop on and solve it. All right, so it's the probability that X bar is greater than 2.5. So you just sketch the curve. Whoosh. So the mean should be 2.24 and I wanna be greater than 2.5. So that's over here and then greater than, so I'm gonna shade the area to the right this tail area to the right here. Woo -doo 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 -doo. You got sound effects and everything for this problem. So again, it's gonna be normal CDF. So in this case, my lower is 2.5. What's my upper? Because it's a, a probability to the right. Nine, 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 nine. Then the mean, which is 2.24. And then again, the standard deviation. 0.2. Yep.
So you're gonna go normal CDF. So my lower is 2.5. My upper is nine, 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 nine. The mean stays the same, 2.24. Standard deviation is 0 0.3. How many people, if you did it, got this? 0 0.1931. Here. Yep. Good. Anybody else? Awesome. 0 0.1931. What did you get, Jamie? I got 0.4655. Is that, I did four. Oh wait, no, I don't know what I did wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet you plugged it into your calculator wrong. So like, look at your, look at what you inputted and in, do you have, did you input what I put on the screen there? Yeah, oh, I put three instead of 0.3. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that'd do it. All right. So what do you think? You think you can handle a problem like this on the exam? I believe so, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I believe so. Okay. All right. Let's do the last type of question on the exam, okay? Everybody okay if I go to the next slide? Hopefully. <laughs> okay. All right. So the last type of question is going to be about the sampling distribution. Of the sample proportion. So I was reading uh, um, an old textbook and I came across this statistic. Okay, so here, here, here's, here's the, the, the pertinent information. The National Coffee Association Okay, which I assume is a real place. I, I should have Googled it, but I didn't. So the National Coffee Association reported that 63% of adults drank coffee daily. Okay. Um, what do you guys think of that statistic? High, low, about right? And I guess you, you could guess my opinion. What do you guys think I think about it? I think it's way too low, yeah. I mean, how do adults survive without coffee? I don't understand. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense to me, okay? I got some coffee pods from for Easter. Say that again. I got coffee pods for Easter. There you go. See, you're even getting, you know, in your Easter basket, right? Um, all right. So here's here's the the problem. Okay, the next next point of information. Okay. Suppose a random sample. of 400 adults is taken and the proportion who drink coffee daily is recorded. Okay. 
All right, so right in this problem, you're only given two pieces of information, okay? So let me just write what you're given. You're only given that the sample size is 400 adults. So you're given N is 400. And we're gonna assume that the National Coffee Association, that this is the population proportion. So I'm gonna change it to 0.63, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is um, just the problem set up here. All right, let's describe the sampling distribution of what we call p hat. Okay, that's the sample proportion, okay? So what exactly is p hat? I'm gonna define it for you. I'm gonna let p hat be equal to the sample proportion of adults who drink coffee daily in a random sample of 400. Okay. So here's the thing. Look, the reason this is a random, why this is a random variable is if you call 400 adults, okay, um, and you ask them, no, do you drink coffee daily? Do you drink coffee daily? Do you drink coffee daily? Like you're going to get a different, um, a different amount generally from a, one sample to the next sample. So it's not like if you call 400 adults and then you call another 400 adults, you're going to get the same value. Okay. So here's what we want to know. Okay. We know that the, the P hat is a random variable, just like X bar. Okay. And so what I want to show is that it's normally distributed. Um, so there was a number check for this. Um, does anybody remember what the number check was? It was like the, one of the last things we did on um, a Thursday of last week. Uh, you're close. There was a little, there was a few other parts to it. So you just had to do this number check. It was N times P times one minus P. And it had to be, yep, perfect. Thanks, Jamie. You got it. it. Had to be greater than or equal to 10. Well, look, you're given N, awesome. And you're given P. So let's just plug in and, 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 and chug through the problem. So it's 400 times 0 0.63 times one minus 0 0.63. And I got 93.24, okay? which is absolutely greater than or equal to 10. So it's like, sweet, it checks out. So when that number checks out, this is what happens. So thus the sampling distribution of P hat is normal, is normally distributed. with so when something's normally distributed um you got to say the mean which we denote as mu sub p hat okay does anybody remember what this is equal to so the average of the sample proportions Does it have a two in it? It does not. Okay, no, don't. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. That was a great way to set this up. So it's it's always just equal to whatever the population proportion is. Okay, so look, it's 0 
so all this is saying is the following. Look, if I call 400 adults, sometimes I'm going to get greater than 63% of them saying they drink coffee daily. Sometimes I'm going to get less than 63% saying they drink coffee daily. But the average of all the, all those, the sample proportions I do should be 0.63. It should be the same as the population proportion. And the standard deviation, we denote as sigma p hat. And it's equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. All right, which is the square root of 0 0.63 times 1 minus 0 0.63 all over 400. Please listen to me. Okay, please take out your calculator and see if you get the same thing I get. Okay, I'm going to do this on both the TI-83 and the TI-84 so you can see the right answer. Okay. So on the TI-83, you'd go second function square root 0 0.63 times and then in parentheses 1 minus 0 0.63. Close that set of parentheses. Divide by 400. And then you see how you have this set of parentheses open here. You have to close it. And you should get this, 0 0.0241. On the TI-84, it's a little bit different. Square root 0 0.63 times 1 minus 0 0.63. Close that parentheses, divide by 400. And you get the same thing. You just so you you just you know this calculator the TI eighty three requires an extra set of parentheses. Okay. How many people got this value right here? If you felt follow, followed along, awesome. Okay. So what's going to happen on your exam for this question is it's going to be multiple choice. Okay. So what I'm going to say is, is like select the standard error for this sampling distribution, and it's going to be a bunch of numbers. So you're going to plug it in your calculator, and you're going to see if you get one of the numbers that's um, listed there. Okay. Can you close the calculators real quick? Yep. Point zero two four one. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you. So what's going to happen is um, uh, the, 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 Jamie, that's a good question. So what'll happen is on the, on the exam, you'll get to this problem and it'll say, okay, what is the mean for the sampling distribution? And then you'll just have to select that this is the mean. And then the next question will say, what is the standard deviation for the sampling distribution? And you'll just have to select this, okay? On the exam, I won't actually ask you to do this number check, okay? I just wanted to walk through it with you. So on the exam, you won't have to do this number check, okay? Trust me, it'll make, it'll make sense when you see it on the exam. And then even if it doesn't, I'm gonna be there on Zoom to answer any of your questions, okay? Uh, somebody had a question. I just can't hear you. No? Or I thought it did. Okay. If you didn't, the, what the problem is, is you plugged it into your calculator wrong. So what you have to do is you have to practice with your calculator and like figure out if it's an extra setup. Uh, so do you have a TI-83 or TI-84? In the chat. So what you had to do, most likely you didn't have this extra set of parentheses at the end. You just have to make sure you plugged it in exactly like this. So I'm gonna go on to the next question, but like, just like, just practice when you get home, like just see like, okay, you know, you, there's going to be the recording for this is going to be posted like an hour after class. You can pause at this point and, and check your answer and, and, and verify.
All right. Perfect. All right. Yeah, it was I just out of curiosity, was it? Did you forget a set of parentheses? Or, uh, okay. <laughs> well, then I was wrong. <laughs> it was something else. All right, let me ask you a, a question now, okay? So now I'm just going to ask a probability question, okay? So what's the probability? that more than 65% in the sample drink coffee daily. Okay. So this is just asking, hey, what's the probability that your P hat is greater than 0 0.65? Okay. Um, I know it seems silly and don't worry, I'm not going to ask this much more in this class, but what, what, what helps me solve this? Stretching the graph. Yeah. Yeah. And so look, P hat, what we did in here was we said it's normally distributed. The mean should be centered at 0 0.63. And I want to be greater than 0 0.65. Okay. So what am I going to do on my calculator here? always normal CDF. So my question first is what's my lower value here? Zero point six five. Mm -hmm. The upper is nine nine nine. Yep. The mean is zero point six three. Mm-hmm. Your standard deviation rate. Right? And what is it? That would it be 0 0.0241. Yep, what we had here. And that's it. Okay. So now we're going to grab that the trusty calculator. So you're going to go second function distribution, normal CDF, 0 0.65, comma, 99999, comma, 0 0.63, comma, 0 0.0241. And if you follow along, how many people got this right here? 0.2033. I didn't get that. What did you get? I got negative uh, 0 0.796695. Hmm, something's off. Did you go, did you go, um, cause remember I said more than, so did you go 0 0.65 comma 99999? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I put negative. All right, thank you. Let it do it. All right, so it's 0 0.2033. All right, let me ask you the last question. So let me know when I can go to the, uh, the next slide. Anybody need me to stay or can I? Hop on. Hop away. 
hop away. Okay. Well, then I will hop away. So the next question was, in a random sample of 400, what's the probability that less than 240 drink coffee daily? All right, so in a random sample of 400, what's the probability that less than 240 drink coffee daily? Um, so do you notice in this problem, I don't say less than 65%, I just give you a number, I want less than 240. Um, so we did one problem like this last class. Does anybody remember the procedure, what you have to do? Dun, 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 dun. I just have to take the 240 and change it to a sample proportion somehow. So I want less than 240 of 400, which is the same as less than 240 divided by 400, which is 0 0.60. So whenever I give you a, a whole number like this, just change it to a proportion. Okay, so it's the probability that p hat is less than 0 0.60. So again, normally distributed. So the mean was 0 0.63, I believe. Yep. And I want to be less than 0 0.60. I don't know what sound effects that, that was. That was weird. I'm sorry. So again, it's just normal CDF. What's my uh, what's my lower here? Negative nine nine nine. Mm -hmm. What's my upper? Zero. Oh, yeah, I was going to say 0 0.60. Yep, 0 0.60. 0 0.63 for the mean. Yep. And then the standard deviation was that value we found, which was 0 0.0241. So I'll do this in the TI-84 so you can see. Point nine nine negative nine nine six point 63.240. So you're gonna go second function distribution, normal CDF was negative nine 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 nine. Upper was zero point six zero. The mean was zero point six three, and the standard deviation was zero point zero two four one. And you should get this. 0 0.1066. 0 0.1066. What do you think? Well, let me ask this. Not bad. How many people got that answer that I got right there? Okay, good, good, very good. Yes, good. All right, that is the exam. That's it. That's your exam. Think you guys will be okay for Thursday? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. And then the course is like, what do we have, like four weeks left, or something like that? It's just like crazy. Where did this semester go? Do we have one last test before the semester's over? Yes, we do. One last exam.
So if you guys remember, according to the syllabus, I'll drop your lowest exam from exams one, two, or three, but then everybody has to take the last exam and the last exam cannot be dropped. So the, la the last exam just gonna involve confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, which are like the two most important topics of this course. It's not cumulative, nope, not cumulative. And we're gonna rely very, uh, you're welcome. Yep. Yay. Uh, we're going to rely again very heavily on our graphing calculator um, to help us to help us work through the problems. Okay. It's a lot of fun. I actually like the last two sections quite a bit. I think they're really good. All right. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo.